Hello everyone, it's Jeff again, and I am home in Monticeno, Washington, and I would like to tell you the story of a long-forgotten grave not very far away in Port Angeles, Washington. Elsie Winters was born on the 26th of February in 1919 in Port Angeles, Washington. Her story begins in Port Angeles, Washington, and her story will end in Port Angeles, Washington. In 1941, Elsie enrolled in the Simpson Bible Institute of Seattle. She soon met and started dating a fellow student, Archie Emerson Mitchell, who was born in 1918, who came to school from Ellensburg. Following graduation, Elsie and Archie married in Port Angeles on the 28th of August, 1943. Their honeymoon was a trip cross-country to Nyack, New York, where they attended a one-year program in missionary work. When they returned from New York in March 1945, Archie Mitchell was offered the position as pastor at the Christian and Missionary Alliance Church in Bly, Oregon. Reverend Mitchell's plan was to be pastor at the church for two years before he would leave for two years of missionary work overseas. Bly was a small town of 450 people located between Klamath Falls and Lakeview in South Central Oregon. In May of 1945, Elsie found herself five months pregnant, and the couple was excited to start a family. On the 5th of May, 1945, Reverend Mitchell and his wife took a group of five children from their church to the nearby Gearhart Mountains after church for a picnic. The 5th of May of that year was an absolute beautiful day, and Gearhart Mountain is one of the most picturesque places that you can humanly possibly imagine. The children and Mrs. Mitchell ran out of the car and was looking for a place for their picnic while the reverend parked the car in the shade. It's at this point I should probably tell you a little bit about this gentleman right here, Major General Sukai Kusaba. He has quite a bit to do with the story from here going forward. He had studied quite a bit about American history, and he was very familiar with the fact that there had been three devastating forest fires in northern Oregon between 1933 and 1945. The first fire in 1933 had started at Gales Creek in August of 1933 and had burned 350,000 acres. The second fire had started in 1939 by a logging operation and burned 190,000 acres. The third fire started on the 9th of July in 1945, and it burned 180,000 acres. And this fire is part of the story that I'm telling you now because of the way the fire started and I'm going to tell you how it started right now. In September of 1942, Major General Sukai Kusaba came up with the idea of starting a large forest fire on the west coast of America to take away manpower from the war effort and to destroy the timber needed for the war effort. On the 9th of September, 1942, a seaplane launched off a submarine off the Oregon coast dropped two incendiary bombs on the Siskiyou National Forest in the hopes of starting a large forest fire. However, it had rained recently and response crews quickly put out the small flames. 
Later in September of 1942, Major General Sukai Kusaba came up with the idea of releasing balloons from the Japanese coast to let the jet streams carry them over the west coast of America, where they would drop incendiary and anti-personnel bombs in the hopes of starting forest fires and grass fires. The 30-foot diameter helium-filled balloons were constructed by school-aged Japanese children out of paper and paste. The balloons were actually pretty complex, with valves and timers intended to keep the balloons aloft for 100 hours at between 30 and 35,000 feet. They carried a mixture of incendiary and anti-personnel bombs. The third Tillamook burn fire that started on the 9th of July, 1945, it is believed was started by one of these balloons. In all, Japan released 9,300 of these balloons. They have been found in Acapulco, in Alaska, and New Jersey, several of the Canadian provinces, and all points in between. The remains of the balloons have continued to be discovered after the war. At least eight were found in the 40s, three were found in the 1950s, two in the 1960s, and several in the 1970s. One was found near Lumbee, British Columbia in 2014, and one was found in McBride, British Columbia in 2019. During the war, they were very often found entangled in trees and brush, like this one photographed here. During the war, the U.S. government did not tell people about these balloons because they didn't want to start a panic and they didn't want it to get back to the Japanese that the balloons were in any way successful. So when Elsie Mitchell and the five children on their Sunday picnic at Gearhart Mountain, Oregon, on the 5th of May, 1945, discovered a balloon entangled in the trees and brush. They didn't know what it was, and they approached it while the reverend was parking the car, and unfortunately, the balloon exploded. A monument was built at the scene of the incident, with the ponderosa trees all around it still scarred from the shrapnel. The reverend went on to remarry a year and a half later, and him and his new wife continued on and became missionaries and ended up in the small war-torn nation of Vietnam, whereas his first wife was one of the only civilian deaths during World War II on U.S. soil. He became one of the first civilian deaths in the Vietnam War. We end up where we started, at the small forgotten grave in Port Angeles, Washington, where Elsie lies alone and forgotten. Remember everyone, think good thoughts, do good deeds, and I will see you again on another adventure.